Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host Brett Murphy and for today's video it is going to be my very first AMA or Ask Me Anything. Now of course this is a very special video celebrating a milestone that I hit just last week in which this channel finally hit 1000 subscribers on YouTube. And this video is just the first of a few special videos that I have planned in order to celebrate the occasion. At the end of last week, I posted this everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, looking for any questions about anything. When I say ask me anything, I, I meant anything about movies, TV shows, video games, or anything personal. And thankfully, I got quite a few questions. Now, sadly, I can't spend a ton of time on them, but it's also not going to be like rapid fire one word responses just for the sake of video length. I'll touch on some things a little bit more than others, that's all. And I will also be leaving the links in the description of any YouTubers who asked me a question that was featured in this video. So be sure to head on over and support their channels as well. And without further ado, let's hop right into the questions. Read Comics over on YouTube asked, What do you think of Marvel's Avengers and what do you think is the best streaming service? Marvel's Avengers, if we're talking about the team, I love them. If we're talking about the movies, I love them. If we're talking about the game, I skipped out on it. I was excited for it initially, I pre-ordered it and everything, but after I saw their microtransaction system and after I played the beta and the game just felt super broken and repetitive, I canceled my pre-order and I haven't looked back. And as for the other question, streaming services, I would probably say Netflix. I find they have the best original content and they have the most variety, so yeah, probably Netflix. Now, Nerdy Blurb TV from over on YouTube as well asks three questions. What is your most quoted movie ever? I don't think I have a specific one. I'm one of those people that quotes movies constantly in my daily life. Like, any time that I see an opportunity to quote a movie, I'm going to do it. And I'm that person too that also says a quote and then looks around at everyone else in the room and goes, what's that from? What's that from? Do you know what that is? And then I'll like give little hints and things like that. So the second question is, what's the best thing of 2020? Yeah, there's not a lot. <laughs> there really, there really isn't a lot. 2020 has been an awful year for so many reasons, but I would probably say like the console launches, I guess, like the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, but seems to be the only redeeming quality of 2020 at this point. And the last question is, when did you first get into filmmaking slash videos making? Had multiple YouTube channels like any kid did uh, back when it kind of first started out and I was in elementary school. I had multiple with my friends. I had a couple of personal ones where we would just post like stupid things like kids do. Uh, so thank you, Nerdy Blurb TV, for those questions. Also, fantastic YouTuber. Be absolutely sure to check out that channel. Fantastic, top tier, very high quality stuff. Next, Josh from The Movie Apprentice asked, what is your first cinema memory? The first movie that I saw or the first movie I remember seeing was actually Spider-Man, Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man from back in 2002. That is the first like big screen movie I remember seeing, so you know, not a bad start. Um, so thank you, Josh, excellent question. Also another fantastic YouTuber, does movie reviews, very, very nice guy. Be sure to go over and support his channel as well. Uh, next, Jack Benner's Movie Reviews from YouTube asks three questions. The first one, what are your favorite cartoons growing up? My favorite cartoons growing up, I was always into superhero cartoons. Always, always, always. Top three would likely be Batman the Animated Series, the 90s Spider-Man show, and probably Batman Beyond. Those are the ones I watched a lot. Uh, second question was, what are some of your memorable movie-going experiences? God, there's so many. There's so many. Um, a lot of them have to do with superhero movies. I'm a big superhero fan. I'm not afraid to admit it at all. I love my blockbuster popcorn flicks. Um, to top two that come to mind, I would say first time seeing The Avengers back in 2012, seeing that spinning shot basically brought a tear to my eye, and then seeing Avengers Endgame in which I was an absolute mess. I bawled and bawled and bawled, but I also have very great memories of seeing The Dark Knight for the first time for my 10th birthday and also seeing Iron Man opening night with my best buddy Nick um, back in 2008. So yeah, I've been there from the very beginning with the MCU, so those come to mind most frequently when thinking about my most memorable movie-going experiences. And then lastly, what are movies you loved but never want to watch again? That was also a tough question. I would say any movies that have like really, really heavy subject matter, like things that really kind of weigh on you emotionally, first thing that comes to mind, probably something like Schindler's List. And although I loved it, it is a very, very dark and depressing 
just such a heavy film that it, you know, it's not one that you want to be rewatching and, you know, showing the kids and things like that. It's a very dark film. So anything like that, that may be like really disturbing or have very heavy subject matter are ones that, you know, I don't tend to go back and watch again. Uh, so shout out to Jack Benner. Thank you for the question, sir. One of my oldest friends on YouTube, again, does superb movie review so be sure to check out his channel as well next is rio's positive pov over on twitter asks i want to know what your first ever holy shit i love movies moment was i would probably once again say spider-man 2002 again like my first memory of a theater going experience but i remember loving it again huge superhero fan growing up loved the action figures that i had loved the cartoons that i watched so seeing this hero brought to life on the big screen it really struck a chord with me and just made me absolutely fall in love with movies but i, I mean i love them before that anyway i always watched movies as far back as i can remember i remember like loving toy story as a kid and things like that so yeah shout out to rio's positive pov also excellent um cinemas film talk as someone who reached 1k and then lost motivation to post what's going to keep you striving to reach your next milestone i can understand why some people lose motivation it takes so much drive to hit that 1k mark for most people. I know it took a lot out of me. There were times that I thought about quitting. To finally hit it is such a relief and such a huge accomplishment for me in my life. I would say just the fact that like this is what I love. I love making YouTube videos. Even if I'm not getting money from it, which I'm not, I love making them. I love creating content. I love sharing my opinion with people. I love, you know, discussing with people and collaborating with them. All that stuff. That's kind of what always kept me going. Even on the, like the down moments, I, I get back into it because it's something that I really, really do enjoy. But I mean, I, I'd, I'd love to have a future on YouTube. So that's a big thing. And of course, it's that sweet green. Everyone loves money. This one comes from Alex Davies who asked it on uh, Instagram. Also a, a friend of mine that I've known for so long from YouTube. A few Australia questions. A uh, thought on Australia as a country. I love Australia. I've never been, but Australia looks beautiful. Like one of the most stunning countries on the planet. Would absolutely love to travel there. That's the next question. Would you ever travel here? I'd love to, but here's the thing. I'm deathly afraid of flying. I hate flying. Now, I have been on trips. I've been to the States a couple of times. I've been over different parts of Canada. I've been, like, down south to us Canadians to things like uh, places, sorry, places like Cuba and the Dominican Republic. Don't know if I'd ever actually be able to get on a plane to get there. Uh, and then fave actress, actor, movie, TV from Australia. Actress, I'd say Margot Robbie, not just because she's a pretty face. I find she's a very, very talented actress. I like her a lot. Actor probably go Hugh Jackman I mean Wolverine again going back to the superhero thing I've always loved Hugh Jackman and anything that he's in I think he's such a charismatic and genuine person so I love Hugh Jackman favorite Australian movie I'm not too sure I mean I guess I could do a bit more research but off the top of my head I don't really know if you mean movies like filmed in Australia movies set in Australia I'm sure if I looked into it a little bit more I could definitely give an answer and then same thing with TV shows I'm not a huge TV show watcher to begin with, so I don't think I've seen anything from Australia. But regardless, thank you once again, Alex, for the questions about Australia. It's nice. Nice little change of pace here uh, to break things up a little bit. A few questions from over on Facebook. First one from Trent Lee, a very good friend of mine. Playing games with him for the last two years. Become very, very close. A very, very, very nice person. Love that guy. Uh, what's the worst movie you've watched and the best movie you've watched? Worst movie? There's so many. Catwoman comes to mind. Uh, the Cave, that horror movie um son of the mask there's a few i usually try to avoid horrible movies but those are movies i watched and regretted it so much um best movie django unchained is my favorite movie of all time gotta go with that one uh, he also asked a few more questions top three anticipated video game releases xbox or playstation first one that comes to mind obviously was my most anticipated of this year if it actually does end up coming out this year cyberpunk 2077 uh, very much looking forward to Spider-Man Miles Morales. And then lastly, for those of you who don't know me a little bit more personally, I love zombies, movies, TV shows, comic books, and of course video games. My favorite of them being Dying Light, so naturally extremely excited for Dying Light 2. If you could watch one movie for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? I'd have to pick something longer, something with a lot of rewatchability, and maybe something that you can like kind of dissect a little bit more. So maybe something like lord of the rings the return of the king the extended edition if i could that movie's like four hours and like 20 minutes long a lot of content there. there's a lot of lore to the franchise and the world nick pellerine asks how do you always look so dashing in all of your videos uh because 
a magician never reveals his secrets. So that, that's what I'll say to you, sir. Uh, Nick is the guy that I always mentioned to is one of my oldest, longest, best friends. That's practically a brother to me. Uh, that's him. And then Jennifer McDonald asks, which actor has played Batman the best? Um, if we're going off of Batman in general, I would say Kevin Conroy has always been my Batman, did the voice in the animated series, does the voice in the Arkham games and a lot of the animated movies. But if I had to pick four live action, I'd say each of them, except for like Kilmer and Clooney, have their merits. But my favorite would probably be Christian Bale. I love the Dark Knight trilogy and I love what Nolan did with Batman and I love what Bale brought to the table. So I would probably say Christian Bale. Next, Jared Buckendall from YouTube asks, the worst movie you've ever watched. Again, that list could go on and on hated Catwoman, hated Son of the Mask, hated The Cave, really didn't like something like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot from 03. Uh, yeah, that list is really long. Horror movies I find end up on the list the most. Uh, what pie in the sky goals slash plans do you have for the channel? I have always had a dream, which I'll dive a little bit deeper into later for another question that I know that's coming up. I'd love to turn BamTube into a brand and kind of really branch out and, you know, make it into something special is kind of what I'll say for now. Uh, what was the best advice you didn't want to hear Interesting little story I'll tell. Um, so back when the channel first started out, it was myself and my editor Riley, and we were looking for ways to kind of get known early on. And one of his friends, whom I didn't know, he had just graduated and he was starting up his own little business that focused on basically getting new social media influencers known. So, you know, he trusted this guy and things like that. And he told us to do this whole like dollar 80 method thing. And after I was doing that and I was trying to always add a personal touch. I never ever for to set the record hundred percent straight. I never ever like copy pasted my responses. A lot of them were similar, but I always try to add like a personal touch. And if I didn't watch the whole video, I'd watch like the beginning and the end. And then I'd try to ha add like a little personal flavor to it. And after about a month and a half of doing that, Someone actually messaged me on Twitter, and of course this person will remain unnamed. It was kind of blunt, like, hey dude, just so you know, you're coming off as like a spam bot, almost like account. People are getting annoyed and people are kind of starting to talk about it and notice that like, you know, this is kind of scummy of you to do. And, you know, for better lack of a word, obviously in paraphrasing. And I, it really rocked me. And we had a good back and forth. It never got like heated or out of hand or anything like that. We actually had like a really good conversation. It, things ended on good terms. But it was a rude awakening for me that I really needed. Because I, I looked back and I went through a lot of the comments. And I realized that they did come off as like spammy and like I was just a bot or something. And I was terrified that I was burning bridges that I hadn't even built yet. And that I basically, you know, there goes my YouTube career, right? All these people like Jared who asked this question. I, you know, I was, I wanted to be friends with these people. I wanted to get involved with them and collaborate with them. And I was afraid that I was burning all these bridges, you know, before I even had the chance to build them. So it was definitely advice that I needed to hear. Uh, we immediately cut ties with this person professionally, not you know, friendship wise or anything like that. But that whole method that he laid out for us and this whole plan to get known, that ship sailed. And thankfully I heard that very early on. I started the channel in June, got that like advice, I guess you could call it in July so you know it didn't go on for too long thankfully and I'm friends with most of you now which is fantastic. Next question from Nuon the Movie Slinger another great friend of mine who I've collaborated with in the past and makes fantastic content. What's the first movie you watched that wasn't just entertaining but made you go wow this is life changing and got you interested in the art? The film that made you a film lover. I would probably say either like the Lord of the Rings trilogy or Peter Jackson's King Kong. I watched them roughly around the same time like 0405 so I was only like six or seven and I was completely enthralled with them like they, these movies just encapsulated me in a way unlike any other movie had before that I completely fell in love with the worlds and I didn't know stories could be this epic and hold so much character and so much depth Thank you, Peter Jackson, in a way. Next question comes from Larry over at LC Screen Talk. What fictional world universe would you choose to live in? So the only one that I can think of that would consistently be fun and exciting to be a part of would probably be the wizarding world in Harry Potter. Uh, who's your favorite superhero put to film and why? Batman is my favorite superhero in general. I love the character being put to film because there's so many iterations and each iteration is unique in its own way and you know very distinct and it's cool to see all these different takes on the character and if you were to hook up with a male celebrity who would it be <laughs> of course larry of course <laughs> you would um i probably would say chris evans not gonna lie i think he is one of the most handsome men on the planet not only that but he seems like a really genuine 
just awesome person like even him on twitter you see behind the scenes footage you see him at the red carpet and talking to fans and stuff he just seems like one of the nicest people on the planet so aside from being handsome he's also a good person so yeah chris evans uh my girlfriend actually asked these three over on instagram what's your top three favorite christmas movies and why but if i have to narrow it down to just three i would probably say a christmas carol but the jim carrey one i'm a huge lover and defender of that movie the christmas carol with jim carrey like the cg one uh home alone and then probably elf but i also love so many like i love the polar express i love um the santa claus like there's so 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 many of course the classics frosty rudolph ones like that uh, and if you could visit any movie set what would you choose definitely the lord of the rings because you can still visit that now in new zealand it's it's filled with uh, leftover sets and things like that and tourist attractions from lord of the rings huge huge lord of the rings fan my entire life so definitely lord of the rings now we're coming up on dawson or better known as mr dvb over on youtube who not only creates really 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 solid movie reviews video game reviews and other similar content but also make short films that are actually really good and he often keeps me up to date on those things and they're really really good he does a really good job him and his buddies regardless first question is favorite game of 2020 so far the last of us part two and like it's not even close one of the best stories ever told ever put to gaming it's oh, everything about the game from the graphics to the gameplay to the storytelling everything about it i love it the score oh my god the score i love 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 every single aspect of that game so uh the last of us part two it would be for me a favorite movie soundtrack which meaning scores not songs anything by hans zimmer i mean of course john williams makes the classics but hans zimmer is probably my favorite composer uh if i could go top three i would probably say interstellar man of steel and blade runner 2049 are some of my favorite scores of his uh, most anticipated upcoming film in a year doesn't matter i would probably say the batman once again batman being my favorite superhero i'm a huge superhero movie nerd lover person favorite console or playstation versus nintendo versus xbox favorite console it's a tight race between the 360 and the ps2 but i definitely put more hours into the 360 and that's where i really got into like the multiplayer scene of things so probably the 360 now we move over to trivia chick who asked this on twitter also a very very unique channel be sure to check her content out as well uh can a five ounce swallow carry a one pound coconut if the reference isn't known don't worry about this one of course the reference is known it's monty python and the holy grail come on um scientifically i can't answer that movie trivia wise no it cannot uh, a five ounce swallow could not carry a one pound coconut uh, and then the actual question if you could go back and tell new youtube you anything what would it be i would say stick with it i took a few breaks throughout the two and a half years that i've been on here and the breaks ended up lasting a lot longer than they were supposed to most of them are only supposed to last like a month or so and they end up lasting like three or four months um i would say just don't give up don't get down on yourself on those down times don't think about giving up ever push through always keep going always keep turning out new content always come up with new ideas uh ashley or better known as the movie oracle who has a wonderful game show on her channel so be sure to check that out can you name a film you've seen that gets worse with each viewing my best piece of advice when it comes to this question the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that be careful with nostalgia nostalgia can be great but it can also be dangerous. For instance, going back and watching childhood favorites like Disney Channel shows or things like that, watch it now, it kind of tarnishes those memories a little bit. So you gotta be careful with that. Uh, there's a few other movies. Sometimes when you, you know, when you come out of a theater and you're kind of riding the high of that movie, being like, oh my God, that was so good. Like that's a nine or a 10 out of 10 or an A plus or whatever ranking system you go by. And then a few months later, after you've had some time to settle, you go back into your rewatch with high expectations and then you're kind of let down a little bit. So, uh, next is Joe from Color Positive Movies. Um, what popular or classic movie took you the longest to get around to watching? Um, probably The Godfather. I only watched that for the first time like a year or two ago when I was preparing for a video that I did. Um, that took me a really long time to get around to as I am 22 now. I was probably like 20 or 21 by the time I finally watched it. But also Joe another really really great youtuber be sure to check out his content next is trevor from film geeks he says what's your favorite guilty pleasure movie i have so many but my biggest probably guilty pleasure franchise is the transformers movies at least one to four i don't like five at all the first three four are like i love them honestly they're just mindless explosive entertainment probably my favorite guilty pleasure movies favorite trilogy lord of the rings man come on easily lord of the rings uh what's the most popular movie you can't stand but off the top of my head recently um midsommar 
didn't like it all that much. Us didn't like it all that much. And even The Lighthouse didn't like it that much. So I know those three directors, Ari Aster, Robert Eggers, and Jordan Peele, most people don't think they hit that sophomore slump. I think each of them hit it hard. Uh, Mandy, another one. People love that movie so much. I don't understand why I really hated that movie. That was, that was awful. I did not like it. Um, Team Marvel or DC, depends on what we're talking about. Movies, Marvel, characters, DC, I'd probably say. Favorite movie romance, Han and Leia come to mind as one of my favorites, of course. Um, yeah, you gotta love Han and Leia. Uh, what's a movie crossover you want the most? Godzilla crossing over with the Pacific Rim franchise would be epic. You cannot tell me you do not want to see either Jaggers taking on Godzilla or Godzilla and Jaggers teaming up to take on massive movie monsters. Like, that would be the coolest shit ever. Um, and then favorite sports team. I'm a big hockey guy. I'm Canadian, so that's obvious. Uh, my favorite sports team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. Next is Pat Guy from the Cinemania page. How would you want the X-Men to be brought into the MCU and who would be your dream casting for some of them that come to mind? I think the only way you can do it organically is by saying that the snap created like or i guess in doctor strange multiverse of madness the multiverse like that's the only way you can do it like a rift in time another dimension because you can't have these characters stories not linked to historical events i feel like it's just absolutely necessary to introduce all the mutants now or be like oh yeah they were there the whole time but no one knew that's just a cop out to me it seems like a garbage idea so i feel like it has to be like linked to the multiverse somehow who will be your dream casting i love the idea that of dacry montgomery playing Wolverine, but also Taron Edgerton seems like a really good choice. Professor X can go a number of ways. I would love to see someone like Giancarlo Esposito play Magneto. Mark Strong, I think, would be a great Professor X. So many excellent, excellent choices. Uh, so thank you, Pat, for the question. Uh, certain videos over on Twitter asked, oh boy, okay. Favorite comic book movie, The Dark Knight. Basic bitch answer, I know. Favorite Spider-Man comic, I'm not a huge comic book reader, but I do remember back in junior high, I got really hooked on the Ultimate Spider-Man run that went from like 2000 to 2011, so I'd probably say Ultimate Spider-Man. Hidden Gem, no one talks about. Recently, Blind Spotting. I know it got like a lot of love over time. Uh, Peanut Butter Falcon, no one talks about that movie anymore. God, that movie hit me right in the feels. Those are just a few kind of like recent examples. Uh, most overhyped movie you've seen. Any of the ones that I listed earlier for being like disappointing or people love that hated like Us, didn't care for it, Midsommar, The Lighthouse, Mandy, all these movies that were like praised so much recently, I just did not care for them uh, at all. Favorite animated series, Batman the Animated Series. Thank you very much for the questions. Game Over Movie Reviews, a newbie to the game, but a friend that I made very quickly, a very, very genuine person, great to talk to, always have good conversations. Uh, trying to go for non-film questions. What's your hometown slash city like? Very boring. I live in a very, very small portion of Canada. It's like there's the provinces and then you get to my province and then like half of that province and then a small part of half of that province. I live in a very small area. It's fine, I guess. I mean, I've lived here all my life. My parents have lived here all their lives. There's not much to do though. That's the issue. It's very boring. What do you hate and love about living there? Pretty much everything I just said. I love it because it's a very quiet place and there are parts of this area that are beautiful. Some of the most beautiful that I've ever seen. And I've done quite a bit of traveling, uh, and but it's just boring. Like there's nothing to do. We have like one mall that's like half empty. We have the one movie theater. There's just really not a lot to do. So that's kind of what I hate about it, I guess. And second to last is Ren Geekness. Someone that I've looked up to who was not only like a mentor, but an inspiration to me and someone I can thankfully call a friend. He's such an awesome dude. Uh, very, very high quality content over on his channel. So absolutely be sure to check out Ren. What are some of your favorite first time watch experiences? Again, going back to Iron Man, The Dark Knight, The Avengers, Avengers Endgame. I'll never forget those. What are some characters that you see yourself in? As a character, I've always found myself resonating with Spider-Man more because I felt like that was me. You know, I was the nerdy kid. I was the kid with glasses. I was the kid that got picked on and things like that. So I always felt I kind of was like a bit like Spider-Man. Um, what movie do you wish you could have come up with? Going through all time. I mean, Django Unchained is my favorite movie of all time. Love the idea. Back to the Future. I mean, can I say Iron Man? That way I could have all the money from the MCU rolling in it and calling all the shots like Kevin Feige. Um, you know, anything by Christopher Nolan, anything by Denis Villeneuve, honestly. Um, what villain do you think was right? Thanos. Absolutely, you're Thanos. However you say his name. People badger me all the time with my Thanos versus Darth Vader video on how to say it. He was right. To a certain degree, might not have taken the proper approach, but it's true. So, right idea, wrong way of going about it, but, you know, he, he was he was right. 
he was right. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least, Tevia Smolka asks, question number one, I am just wondering if you would like to collaborate on a video sometime in the future. Absolutely, yes, please hit me up on any of my social medias. Yes, I would love to collaborate. Anyone, anytime, that goes for anyone else who made it this far in the video, reach out to me. I would love to collaborate, always. Question two, I am just wondering what your most anticipated video game of 2020 or 2021. Cyberpunk 2077 would be my most, but at this point it seems like we're not getting it until 2077. And question three, what's your most anticipated movie of 2021? I wish I could say The Batman, but that got delayed. At this point, probably no time to die. I'm very much looking forward to a huge James Bond fan, at least Daniel Craig's James Bond. What's this? Quick outfit change? No. Uh, my bad. I didn't actually realize until I was editing this video that I actually lost a couple of questions somewhere along the line in my Twitter feed, so I had to go back and answer them. First one comes from a longtime friend of mine from over on Twitter, VK Studios, and they asked, who is your favorite director? Probably Christopher Nolan. I have a lot of favorites and a lot who I just admire and see as inspirations, but probably my favorite favorite, I would say uh, Christopher Nolan. Have you ever made a film? I have not. I made a bunch of like skits, like little YouTube videos that no longer exist on a channel I had when I was much, much younger. And what is your favorite film franchise? Probably the MCU. I know it's just, it's a bullshit answer to some people, but I grew up alongside these movies. I saw Iron Man when I was 10, and then I saw Endgame when I was 21 to 20, 20. 20? Yeah, when I was 20. So it was like, you know, years and years and years. I grew up alongside these films and they, they mean so much to me. So I would say favorite film franchise, MCU. And the last question comes from another longtime buddy of mine, Nick from over at Movie Emporium, who does superb movie reviews. He is really, really very genuine, nice person. Um, so he asked, outside of making money, do you have an ultimate goal with YouTube, like writing or something with film in general? So this is actually the question that I was referring to earlier when I was responding to Jared's questions about, you know, I was going to go into more detail later on. And this is the question I was talking about with the more detail. So aside from making money, I have this really like long-term crazy probably not in a million years idea that I would love to do for BamTube TV. And that is, I would love to make BamTube a brand. And what I mean by that is think like Watch Mojo or What Culture, how they, you know, had their main channel until they gained a really big following and then they started branching out. So you still have your main channel, Watch Mojo, but then they branched out into like Miss Mojo and Mojo Plays. And same thing with What Culture. They, they branched out into What Culture Gaming and What Culture Horror and a few other ones, right? What Culture Comics maybe. And that's kind of what I had in mind for BamTube along the line. Like, I'd probably get rid of the TV part at some point, leave this channel as, like, the central hub and just be called BamTube, and then it would branch out and have, like, BamTube Comedy, BamTube Gaming, BamTube This, BamTube That, and it would become its whole own brand sort of thing. And somewhere similar along the lines of that. That's kind of, like, my long-term goal, or as Jared put it, pie-in-the-sky kind of ideas that I had for this channel. Wow, okay, those questions, finally done. I'm like sweating, melting here. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to and I'm really out of breath. All I can say is thank you all so much if you stuck around for all the questions. Thank you all so much for asking the questions that you did. I had a great time going through all of them and answering all of them to the best of my ability. I appreciate, once again, each and every one of you who reached out to me, congratulated me on hitting that thousand subscriber mark, and who reached out and asked questions. You know, it's always awesome to see this kind of support. Uh, it really does mean the world to me. It's, it's hard still to put into words how thankful and grateful I am to each and every one of you who have helped me along the way and who I've been, you know, become friends with over these last two and a half years um this has been a long video and i'm sure it's probably gonna melt my computer but regardless i guess you can see this whole process i'm not gonna bother doing as many cuts as possible this is already gonna like i said melt my computer so regardless you can see the whole clap report here boop, boop, boop. um <laughs> as always stay safe thank you so much for watching and that's a wrap Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you. And while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.